Welcome. Hello, everyone. For those of you I haven't connected with yet this year, Happy New Year. I cannot believe it's already February. Wow, time flies and you're having fun. My name is Brie Fernie. I think we've got a lot of new people here. So for those of you that don't know me, I lead the marketing department here at Team Clearly. I am going to be your presenter for today. Joining me a little later on is Mr. Tony Lewis, our CEO. Tony and I love to team up uh, for our bi-weekly webinars. So it's great to meet you all and have you join us today. Right now, I have everyone muted. Feel free to post any questions throughout the webinar in the control panel. We are also going to record the webinar for your review later. The best way to keep up to date with all the comings and goings at Clearly IP is on our social media platforms. So we will send an email out most likely on Tuesday uh, to all the attendees with a recording on our YouTube channel of today's webinar. I anticipate today's webinar is going to take somewhere between 30 to 45 minutes with some Q&A. For those of you are, who are new here and not familiar with ClearIP, I'll start with a quick introduction to who we are to kick things off. So in short, uh, we are a telecom company that um, our core focus really is supporting our partners and in customers with all things voice communication platforms. We also are very closely associated with the free PBX open source community. Clearly IP has offices in Wisconsin, Vancouver, Montreal, and staff located around the globe. Our team consists of telecom experts that are known reputable leaders in the industry selling, developing, and pioneering new technologies to the business telecom marketplace. So we support our partner channel and solutions for end users for small, medium, large businesses and enterprise size global companies that are really looking to take advantage of unified communications. And our team consists of some of the original collaborators of free PBX. So I know that's important as we do have several free PBX administrators with us today. So in a nutshell, we're a group that's truly focused on new innovation and building the next generation of telephony. So we are telephony gurus, I guess, and we are not afraid to shake things up and raise a few eyebrows while doing so. So we've got a a real impressive background and unique industry skill set with combined years of experience building some of the largest telecom applications in the world. So you're going to want to work with us or know who we are. I hope uh, in today's presentation teaching you about all things SIP trunking. I will also illustrate a little bit about our platform, including with our live demo of how you can actually um, manage and fire up SIP trunks very easily and it's very reliable and very scalable. So it's all about the fundamentals of SIP trunking, the SIP trunking 101, and again, a showcase using our Clearly IP's trunking. So I'm going to take us through everything and then Tony's going to step in for the technical bits, show us live how you go into a trunking store using our trunking store, how to get a SIP trunk configured and working using our SIP platform and our Clearly store. So this is a great example for you all to see how easy it is, even if you're not super technical. Tony's also gonna to briefly touch on some carrier outages the last few months in the SIP trunking world and what Clearly IP is specifically doing to provide new security and redundancy measures. This will be at the tail end of our session today. So I'm sure everyone is here because they're hearing all the continued buzz around SIP trunking and likely why you are here to learn a little bit more and have a better understanding about the benefits. We do offer webinars on this subject as customers are asking us about SIP trunking on a regular basis. We also had a blog post that went out on Tuesday um, by one of our SIP specialists, Susan Thorogood. She handles lots of calls and inquiries and orders for SIP trunking. So um, definitely check out that blog and I will be showing um, a slide on that a little bit later so you can see the link. So SIP trunking is really taking the business world by storm and has been for the last few years and even more so recently. So no matter what size of business or sector, companies utilize SIP trunking for so many 
many of its advantages, not just call savings, but the flexibility and the redundancy and that it's scalable. So our team at Clearly IP gets a chance to chat with customers every day who are excited about the possibilities that SIP trunking offers, but the average person is generally unfamiliar with how it works or what to expect. So this is gonna be an excellent opportunity for us to explain some of SIP Trunking's real benefits. I'm hoping I'm not gonna put anyone to sleep and I will try to keep at a fast pace here. And at the end, hopefully you will all understand the aspects of SIP Trunking better and the advantages of taking these services to your system. So it'll be a what, why, and how on all things SIP Trunking. So let's dive in. SIP does not stand for sipping a cocktail, although I like to joke about that a lot. <laughs> SIP stands for Session Initiation Protocol. SIP trunking is a method of sending voice and other unified communication services over the internet. It works with an IP-enabled PBX, private branch exchange. SIP trunking replaces traditional telephone lines or T1 PRI's primary rate interface. So before SIP became popular and reliable method of transmitting voice signals, telephone calls were primarily carried over the public switched telephone network, PSTN. The PSTN is the network of the copper phone lines we have traditionally associated with the telephone. The PSTN is a circuit switch network which requires a physical connection between two points to complete a call, whereas SIP trunks are virtual phone lines that enable users to make and receive phone calls over the internet versus over those copper lines to anyone in the world with a phone number. SIP trunks utilize a packet switch network in which voice calls are broken down into digital packets and sent over a network to the final destination. So what's the difference between POTS and SIP trunking? POTS lines, P-O-T-S, POTS lines are old technology relying on paired copper wires running from your business to the telephone provider. They generally can't offer the array of features, or if they do, it's at a substantial added cost. They are so much more expensive than SIP trunks and online management tools are prim primitive of or available at all, really. So SIP trunking, on the other hand, is new technology and it includes the maintenance. Most functions are included with the base product and they don't require additional costs. SIP lines are low cost to set up, fast, easy, simple, and can be increased or reduced in minutes as your needs change. That's important. With SIP trunks, you don't need to call a telco, wait for them to come to site to increase your lines or, you know, add hardware and connect that hardware. So it's so much simpler when your business needs to handle more calls to increase your calls and line volume. So the old fashioned public switch telephone network or PSTN with lines are soon becoming a thing of the past. Today's telephony is moving away from traditional PSTN connections into the world of flexible and modern SIP trunking. Now the world's most popular telecom providers have already been phasing out old functionality solutions. They've already began to make the move towards IP, making SIP trunking an inevitable upgrade solution. So it's not really a matter of if, it's a matter of when you will be moving to SIP trunks. So let's talk about SIP channels. Well, each SIP trunk supports SIP channels. A SIP channel is equivalent to one incoming or outgoing call. So a SIP trunk can hold an unlimited number of channels. So users only need one SIP trunk no matter how many concurrent calls they expect. So the number of channels required really depends on how many calls the business will make at any time. So I'm going to give you an example of this. I'm going to give you an example of SIP channels and return on investment. Cost savings and improved technology is always top priority for businesses. So let's use a company example of 50 people, let's say 50 extensions with 50 phones. We know traditionally in the past that this customer would typically need a minimum 10 channel PRI T1 service, which allows 10 simultaneous calls in and out. For most of the time, they're going to peak at 10 simultaneous calls. But at the time where an 11th call comes in, those callers just simply won't get through because that PRI only has been set up with 10 channels. So a 10 channel PRI T1, in terms of cost, it can range 
from 500 up to even a thousand dollars per month depending on the term and location i know in vancouver bc canada a 10 channel pri historically cost around 650 to a thousand dollars a month on a three-year contract so let's use six six hundred fifty dollars for our example here that equates to seventy eight hundred dollars a year and twenty three thousand four hundred over a three-year 36 month term so let's compare that to the cost of a three-year SIP trunk contract for the same 10 channels. Well, at Clearly IP, we charge $17.99 US MSRP a channel. That equates to $179.99 a month. Again, let's compare that to the $6.50 per month. And I know that's Canadian, but just for example's sake, $179. 99 versus 650 a month and the beauty with sip trunking and our platform is you buy the 10 channels you need at 179.99 per month then you can also pay per minute when you need to burst up for those peaks where that prit1 is not flexible so let's say an 11 call comes in your system will automatically burst up so you can receive that 11th call or so on so again 10 channels of SIP trunks is $179.99 per month with Clear IP. Let's add in 5,000 minutes of bursting would be 5,000 minutes times 0 0.09 cents per minute. That's another $45 a month. So we're talking 225 a month for 10 SIP trunks with that bursting capability versus 650 a month for that PRIT1 fixed 10 channels. So that's a potential of $425 in savings per month, $5,100 in savings per year, and nearly 15,000 in savings over a three-year term. And I haven't even brought into consideration the cost for DID DIDs or the cost for long distance on a PRI versus on SIP trunks. So I wanna talk about bursting a little bit in case I confused anyone. With SIP trunks, you can burst up. So if at certain times your business is busy and you get more calls than normal, that that 11th call isn't going to get a busy tone. It's going to be answered. And a lot of times people need to have more lines, especially with the PRIT1, but it's simply not flexible. The beautiful thing about SIP is if you notice your call volume going up, then you can burst or add another channel within minutes versus having to add another pure IT one trunk with more channels, which is at a substantial increase fixed cost, and you'll likely need more hardware to accommodate. Plus with SIP, it will include most of your long distance with, uh, within a large footprint in North America, and then super low rates for international calling. So for, for those of us that grew up only having access to copper lines, this can truly seem like magic and really reduce costs. Clearly IP does have a formula to help you determine how many channels on SIP trunks, AKA lines that you're gonna need. So we're always here to help you figure this out. You can reach out to our sales and we'd be happy to help you with that. Okay, so next up is what is the difference between SIP and VoIP? Although SIP and VoIP are often used interchangeably, they're not the same thing. VoIP stands for Voice Over Internet Protocol. It's a broad term that covers any phone calls made over the internet. It includes a group of protocol technologies of which SIP is an example. SIP is one of those specific protocols that enable VoIP. So all SIP is voice, but not all VoIP is SIP, <laughs> tongue twister. So we understand now that SIP trunks are telephone line trunks that are delivered over an IP network using the SIP protocol and using this method, telecom service and VoIP providers can connect multiple channels to a customer PBX. DIDs or pronounced DIDs, depending on where you are, are direct inward dial numbers and phone numbers that can be linked to the same SIP trunk and numbers can be ported into a SIP trunk too. Great, um, we put a lot of details in that SIP trunking blog that came out Tuesday about 
porting. So if you want to learn more about porting, definitely check that out. So back to that customer scenario example I just gave you on PRI lines versus SIP trunks. You can also have an unlimited number of phone numbers with SIP trunking versus PRI. T1 can only support a certain bank of DIDs or number of phone numbers. So if you have one SIP trunk, you can literally have an unlimited number of phone numbers. The channels don't matter. You could have a thousand phone numbers on one SIP trunk if you truly want it. So you can also have an unlimited number of phone numbers with SIP trunking versus pure IT. One can only support that certain number of bank of DIDs or phone numbers. So SIP trunking offers a range of unique benefits above and beyond that as well. We're going to be going over some of those unique benefits in a moment. And I just want to mention it's really important when you're looking for a SIP trunking provider that you ask yourself some really important questions with whoever you're looking for to support you. So you want to ask yourself, what is their infrastructure? Or really, you want to ask them, what is their infrastructure and what is their global reach? What is their porting process? How long does it take? What is the associated cost for porting your phone numbers? Does this SIP trunk provider you're looking at, do they support E911 dispatchable locations? Are they carries law? and Rebom Act compliant. If you're wondering what that is, check out our YouTube channel. We had a webinar on this uh, last month. What is their service and support? Can you call them? Can you speak to a live breathing person if you need help? Or do they only offer online chat support, which is often the case? Do, does the SIP trunking provider have an admin portal so that you can manage your services? So you can hop, and hop on a portal and add or decrease your services if you need to yourself. Okay, so let's talk about the three primary requirements of Carries Law and the Raybum Act as they are super important to know. But if you want to get into this a little bit more, please feel free to check out that YouTube recording of our webinar in January. So the three requirements are eliminate dialing nine for your 911 calls. So you want to make sure you're working with a provider that does not, does not require a prefix when dialing 911. You want to, number two, ensure your provider has the ability with emergency notifications to be sent to designated extensions for personnel alerting them to the emergency. And lastly, you want to confirm that the SIP trunk provider you're, you're considering can route 911 calls to be transmitted to the appropriate first responder with a dispatchable location. This is so important, especially in the United States. Not so much yet in Canada, but definitely in the USA. Not all SIP trunking providers our Carries Law and Raybomb Act compliant is so important to ask. This is absolutely necessary, especially with these given times and all our remote workers. Again, we held a webinar on this. We recognize the importance of being proactive with technology and compliance deadlines so that we don't put our heads in the sand and just hope for the best. These laws are for the protection and safety of all of us. So SIP trunk providers had to be Carries Law compliant in the USA by February 16th, 2020. Then the Ray Bomb Act went into effect last year on February 16th, 2021 for on-premise systems. And the same date this year on February 16th for hosted cloud off-premise systems. So a SIP trunking provider, we can assist you with being compliant. If you're a customer using SIP trunks, make sure your provider is compliant as this could negatively impact your services. There are fines. If you are not compliant, it's as easy as asking the questions, are you Carrie's Law and Ray Bomb Act compliant? Do you have our E911 dispatchable location set up on our system? And confirm you can dial 911 on your system without having to dial 9 to make a call out. Okay, so let's move on to the why you should be utilizing SIP trunking for business. We went over the cost savings, of course, but we all now understand that SIP trunks are telephone line trunks that are that are delivered over an IP network using the SIP protocol, and that using this method, telecom providers can connect multiple channels to a customer's PBX. DIDs and phone numbers are linked to the same SIP trunk, and numbers can be ported into your SIP trunk. 
So SIP trunks offer a range of unique benefits over PSTM-based solutions, including, of course, the lower costs compared to monthly line rentals, uh, lower call charges, thanks to competition against SIP trunk providers. Some SIP trunk providers even offer unlimited call volume, improved customer service offered through more geographical and international services and numbers. So businesses can easily and efficiently add numbers to their SIP solutions and terminate them too, since customers can contact companies with greater ease. This can mean that your sales increase because you get a faster turnaround on service and support. SIP trunks aren't bound to a location, which means that you can move offices without having to change your number. You can eliminate VoIP gateways as all phone calls are arriving via IP. So this means no extra conversion and can maximize quality too. Modern IP PBXs and unified communication solutions offer customers enhanced productivity, better sales and mobility, and connecting your IP PBX to a SIP trunking solution is far easier than using PSTN lines. It's easier to include additional channels on your SIP trunk to handle increased calls compared to hard lines. And with SIP trunks, you can select the perfect number of channels for your unique requirements. On the other hand, with ISDN and traditional phone lines, you'd have to choose a specific number of lines and those were fixed every month. And lastly, you are gonna be able to have unlimited access to global phone numbers. This is so cool for your business and your team members. So if you have offices or personnel all over the world, or you wanna market a local number in a specific area or region, you're gonna have access to phone numbers easily, any place, anywhere. So that's a huge benefit with SIP trunking. So they're reliable, they're valuable. They offer on-demand cloud SIP trunking. So you can start calling quickly without the complexity of multiple configuration steps or the inconvenience of waiting days for changes to be effective or a technician to come to your site. Let's talk failover and redundancy. So I know at Clearly IP, we provide failover and redundancy to your trunking to try and circumvent PBX network and or data center outages to the best of our ability, self-service. So we offer an extensive dashboard that will allow you to manage most aspects of your services. You can add DIDs, you can add call pass, reduce call pass, you can add or reduce users with ease. We offer toll-free voice, so you can easily add toll-free numbers to your business or port existing numbers to our services and enjoy low monthly inbound toll-free rates. Uh, number porting is really important. We know your business phone number is your identity. It's important to you, so we make sure that porting those numbers are really simple and really easy. We actually have some new back-end automation of our porting for live updates, which is really slick and makes the process even faster. Uh, and again, international calling so that your outbound international service can be added or removed to any account as needed and E911 for seamless integration that provides system integrators and end users compliance and peace of mind with the recently introduced Carries Law and Ray Bomb Act. So as you can see, there's lots of benefits, platform compatibility, um, our services actually will work with almost all major IP PBXs and open source PBX projects. And just about any SIP enabled device can be configured to work with our services. Again, phone numbers virtually everywhere. You can keep your existing hardware. We can connect to existing legacy systems. You can connect SIP trunks to legacy systems, PBXs, ATAs, and even soft phones tier one redundant network. So our Clearly IP trunks are backed by a fully geo redundant infrastructure. So we really try and provide industry leading business continuity for your voice communications and scalable SIP trunks so that you only pay for the connections you need without the risk of rejecting calls by enabling that on demand capacity. So if your call volumes increase, you're still covered. And I do wanna mention, we offer a free trial. So when you're looking at a SIP trunking provider, it's great to do a trial so that you don't have to make business decisions in a vacuum. You can give our service a try before you buy and make sure it's exactly what you're looking for. So we've addressed how SIP trunking can give you the power 
to enhance your business experience. And once you've chosen a provider, hopefully yes, you can choose a you can choose a dedicated internet line for your SIP trunk. So SIP trunks simply go on your in-place high speed. Since many firewalls can handle several WAN connections and internet lines are low cost, separate VoIP connection can be another great way to enhance the quality of your VoIP calls. So this process, you can keep your voice traffic separated from your data traffic. However, the outcome of your choices will depend largely on the cost of your upgrades and your network infrastructure, of course. Remember, you can also upgrade your PBX to an on-premise IP PBX. So unlike with PSTN lines, which are often connected to hardware-based PBX solutions, an IP phone system can offer you an easy to manage and flexible solution. So if you're not ready to go to the cloud or a hosted platform, which includes SIP trunks, then why not upgrade your on-premise system to an on-premise IP PBX and leverage the benefits of flexibility and modern refinements that really only IP telephony can bring. Okay, so one question that is often asked is, again, can I keep my main number? Can I keep my 50 DIDs, which are my staff's direct numbers and are toll free? So again, I know I might be going over this a couple of times, but the short answer is yes. So let's talk about number porting. Number porting is the process of taking an existing phone number and transferring it to another provider. So let's say your business phone numbers, if you were in Vancouver, are with um, Bell Canada. You know, you'd be porting those numbers over to your SIP trunking provider like Clearly IP. And the actual porting of phone numbers on the due date is not a difficult process. You just have to be super organized and it can be quite quick. It is really the preparatory work of organizing all the paperwork. You need to come up with a, an organized list of all your phone numbers, find the associated copies of phone bills from you know, the most recent month. Once you've got all that organized, we submit the port to the new carrier. And once submitted, the porting of the numbers is all done in the background between the transferring carrier and the new SIP trunking provider. You know, this is really important to ask when you're looking at transitioning a business from traditional lines to SIP trunks, you're gonna wanna ask the provider, how long is your process? I know here at Clearly IP, we have this down so well. It's so fast. Uh, Emily oversees our porting. She's fantastic. Also supporting that is Susan. And we are close to a five to seven business turnaround. A lot of our competitors can take anywhere from 10 days, two weeks to two months. So this is, it's important to align yourself with the SIP trunking provider that really knows what they're doing for porting. Okay, I want to talk about faxing because some clients don't realize that another part of SIP trunks and our clearly IP trunking platform is faxing. If businesses are still using faxing, we call it our sendfax.2. I want to touch on it because it's a great solution that customers don't realize are offered as part of our enhanced um, trunking platforms. We've got a lot of existing SIP trunking clients here today that specifically want to learn a little bit more about faxing solutions with their trunking. So sendfax.2 is great for businesses that are wanting to move to virtual faxing or an e-fax platform, or perhaps they want the best of both worlds. They want to keep their physical fax and they want to do virtual faxing combined. So sendfax.2 is truly a total fax platform. So many of our partners and their end customers just rave about this platform. Uh, we launched it uh, a while back now, I guess, and including a new fax device that enables the connectivity of a physical fax machine, but without the need or expense of a dedicated fax line or incurring long distance charges for faxing, which is pretty slick. So the SendFax.2 platform has lots of benefits and features, largely ROI. You can automate your fax processes to improve productivity and efficiencies, improve transmissions and record keeping, and you can fax from anywhere in the world from any 
device. So if you've got people working remotely and you still want them sending, you know, confidential or important information via fax, this will set them up. Plus, as mentioned, customers can significantly reduce the cost of physical phone lines connected to physical fax machines as you don't need that anymore. So let's talk a little bit about inbound faxing. We support inbound fax to email. So our sendfax.2 online portal easily configures inbound email delivery from any fax-enabled T.38 numbers available in most North America regions. So inbound faxes can be delivered to up to two email addresses. So for example, you could send them to your receptionist or a specific department person in let's say sales or orders to manage and distribute those faxes you can define up to two email addresses that will be sent the inbound fax on a per did basis outbound faxing so outbound email to fax it allows you to send an email to a fax line so you can take outbound emails and send them to the fax number at send fax.2 that'll convert a fax and send to the fax phone number another benefit are rebrandable email alerts and even the send fax.2 domain for resellers with our send fax.2 there is no e-fax portal so it relies a hundred percent on email for faxing fax cdr show all the sent and received faxes in the store and you're gonna have the ability to set a password that all fax pdfs are encrypted with at a per group level so again setting a fax is super easy three steps you create your new email you click compose new email you attach your documents the body of the email can serve as your cover page then you enter the email address in the to field which is going to be the fax number at sendfax.2 click send your email will be converted to a fax and you can receive a status delivery confirmation. It's pretty slick. And again, you don't need to get rid of your fax machines. If you want to keep them, no problem, but you don't need a traditional phone line to support it. If you have an internet connection with our device, you can then fax to and from it. Our sendfax.2 device has two network ports and two analog ports, allowing you to plug in two separate fax machines if you wish really any device of your choice it's there for customers that are still needing or wanting a physical fax machine is developed for you to use with other pieces we develop for fax at the same time okay so you don't need to be a networking or telecom expert to take advantage of SIP trunking for your business, we do recommend, again, choosing a strong partner that's going to walk you through the implementation process and support you as the needs of your business change over time. I'm going to have Tony take over from here in a moment on the live demo. I just want to show you if you're wondering, huh, pricing, please show me, Bree. Here you go. Our call pass are starting at $17.99 per month. And I do want to mention that we offer two types of call pass. I know Susan gets asked this a lot. One that has no per minute charge that you pay by the channel and the other where you do not pay by the channel, but you pay by the minute for all inbound and outbound calls. And third, we offer a hybrid model where you can have both types of call pass on the same location so you have three options we've actually just updated our sip trunking page with the three options if you want to check that out on our website feel free all right our platform lastly i want to mention is constantly being evolved and um, really enhanced we do send regular updates to our SIP trunking customers of the new features and enhancements to make sure you're aware and that you can take advantage. There is no better way to get going on this than to give it a try. Reach out to me or sales after this webinar. We'll get you set up with a free trial so you can test the quality. You can see everything and use the stuff that we talk about and that Tony's gonna demonstrate. Okay. I hope that was not too painful and that I helped everyone get a good understanding on SIP trunking. Tony, why don't you take over from here with your live demonstration? Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Tony with Clearly IP. Let me get my screen share set up here. How are you today? I'm doing good. You good. should see my screen. You bet. Okay, perfect. So 
I'm going to walk through just briefly our um, portal, and then we're going to use a free PPX-based system to show how easy it is to set up the trunks and bids and routing and get everything done in a matter of 30 seconds. So our portal is just at trunking.clearlyap.com, and if you don't have an account, you can create an account right there. And once you log in, you'll be presented in our main dashboard. And from here, you can nav navigate around to do different things. So we're not going to spend a lot of time walking through everything you can do. But for example, you can manage your account settings related to your company. So you can manage the company name if that changes and billing addresses, um, different contact types. So we have technical contacts, billing, porting, and sales. And you can add additional contacts or remove contacts from here. Contacts themselves are can have login ability to our portal or not login ability. So when you create a new contact under account contacts, you can pick who has login and who doesn't. So when we edit this contact, we can enable login ability and that will let them log into our portal. Um, so you can do that for each contact and you can even manage permissions related to that contact of what they're allowed to see and do like you might be able to re you can restrict them to what locations they can see or there's a lot of different permissions you can grant a user by default new contacts that you give login ability can do everything but you can restrict that back down we can see our invoice history under the invoice tab and see the due date and if it's been paid and what location it's for the amount charged current balance and even view the invoice just by clicking the button here. If you're on credit card and for some reason your credit card failed, you've added a new credit card, uh, you can come in here and pick the unpaid invoices and hit paid and it will charge your credit card. Um, again, you can manage your payment methods right here. So this is where you would add your credit cards. It'll show you all your existing sources. Uh, this customer happens to have, this fake customer happens to have $7,000 of terms. So we bill them, it's not on their credit card. Um, we do offer terms for larger entities, government agencies, municipalities, uh, where we'll bill you an invoice you can send payment versus using a credit card. CDRs will show us all of our inbound outbound calls and they're rated real time. So as you hang up the call, a couple seconds later, they'll show up in here, including the cost. So this call happened to use our uh, unlimited domestic call pass, the subscription call pass. You'll notice there's no charge for it. But if it was a metered call, we'd see metered here and it would show us what the charge for that call was. So how do we manage the actual SIP trunking itself? So that's all done in what we call locations. So when we go to locations, we can see a list of all the locations we have. And I happen to have 27 of them here. And we can add a new location pretty easily. So we'll hit add a new location. We want a SIP trunking location. You can pick between subscription call pass or pay per minute. So if we do a subscription in one, and then you can pick your plan types, depending on what you're set up for, month to month, a 12 or 36 month contract. If we pick month to month, we'll see one call path is $24.99 where you don't pay per minute. If we did it under a three year, we'll see it's $17.99 a month. If we look at pay per minute only, we'll see there's no charge for those call paths. You just pay by the minute for the calls. So everything's laid out here. We'll do a subscription month to month in our example here. Hmm. I got my browser confused, but there we go. So we'll hit next. We'll give it a name. If I can click the right buttons here. Uh, we can enable SMS. We can enable international calling in that bursting where right now we're buying one call path where we don't pay per minute. But if we wanna allow additional calls where we pay per minute, we can enable that here. We're gonna leave these off. We can do these later. I'll show you that. Um, address for taxation purposes, because you might have multiple locations in different rate in different cities and there's different taxes in each city. So we'll hit next. We can start buying our phone numbers. So pick a state. Well, country and then either state or providence and then your rate center or also known as city for most people and then it'll show you all the dids available so we'll grab two dids from here we want toll free same thing we can come in here and say i want a 855 number and if i wanted maybe i want it to end with uh 1401 
we can put 1401 and it will try to find any numbers that end in 1401, for example, which it's not finding any. So we'll hit next. We can add emergency services. So you get a free E911 with every location you buy from us with um, call pass subscriptions. You get a free E911. You can buy additional E911 after that. So we'll f you can just fill in the information for your 911 address, validate that address that it's correct for 911. And it is now, we can hit next. Pick our payment source. Normally this would be your credit card, hit next. Agree to our terms and you're done. So at this point, it's gonna go allocate everything and create everything for you. This takes about 30 seconds. We can even see the whole report. So generate an invoice, it created the new location, it added a, a one unlimited call path, it bought these two DIDs we asked for and allocated them, it set up the 911, and it's done. So at this point, you're ready to connect that location to your PBX. So I've got a location down here. Let's see here. We're gonna go look in a location quickly. So we're gonna go look in my test location I have here because I have a lot of DIDs and 911 setups. It's a good example. So we're gonna view that location. And in the location, we can see all kinds of information. So we can see what we call our location ID number. This is unique generated by us for each location. The name and description and what address it is for taxation, what plan it's under, um, like month to month or 36 month. And you can edit, for example, the name and description and address information. So if that ever changes, you can uh, update it from here. We can see in this one, I've got one subscription call path. I've got international enabled with two call paths, $10 a week limit. I've got metered enabled with five additional call paths where I pay per minute with a $100 a month limit that I don't wanna exceed $100 on that. You can manage these yourself, these settings by hitting the edit, adjust metered services. And we can say, no, I need seven additional meter call paths and I want my limit to be $50 a month. And there we go. These thresholds here, you can set notifications on these dollar thresholds. So up here on our balance, we'll see for metered, well, let's refresh, there's the $50 and we've used zero of it. But we can hit the little bell notification here and we can set notifications. So for metered, we say every hour, if we've exceeded 15% of the balance, which would be really low, probably more like 70%, send an email to this email address. And we can do the same thing with international. International is a weekly limit, so we can say every hour. If I've exceeded more than 50% of my international limit, send an email to this email address. And you can provide multiple emails with a semicolon between them. We've enabled SMS so that we can send and receive SMS. And this one, we happen to have a fax call path, a low volume faxing that we bought. And then we added two additional bursting call paths for faxing where we pay per minute for those fax calls. Um, we're currently not registered to any of our servers, which we're gonna do in a second. And we've set a failover. So in the event that we're not registered, we can't reach your PBX and we get an inbound call, we're gonna fail that number over when it's unreachable. So that means we can't reach the PBX. We're gonna send the inbound calls that hit this location to this phone number. You can also set a failover per DID you own. So if you set a failover on a DID, it will ignore the global failover here. If you set a failover here and the DID itself doesn't have a failover, it will use this global failover defined here. And then there's a bunch of other settings related to like stir shake and uh, default up on caller IDs. So we're saying here, if you send us an unknown caller ID, automatically update it with this caller ID. But well, what's an unknown caller ID? If we hit edit here, it'll explain. So unknown is this option will be used if the caller ID that you send us on an outbound call is not a DID associated with this SIP location. An invalid, which is our default option. This option will be used if the caller ID number is invalid. So we validate the number as a real number. And if that number, even if it's not a number you own with us, if it's invalid, we will replace the caller ID you sent us with whatever you define down here. Or you can say always update every call with the 
call ID information down here. So why do we have the default at the trunking level? Uh, mainly for stir shaken. So stir shaken is very clear. You can't send call ID that's not a valid number or that you have a right to use that number. So what we're saying here is if you misprogram your PBX for some reason and you send an extension number by accident, we can't send that call out anymore under stir shaken guidelines. We'd have to reject the call. But if you define your call ID here, we'll replace that extension number you told us with what you defined here and still be able to deliver that call outbound for you. And then because you have, because we enabled metered up here, this bursting, and we enabled SMS, and we enabled metered faxing, it now shows us all the different metered rates. So voice, our per minute inbound, ignore this rate, it's a made up rate of 1.5, it's much lower than that, but in my example here, what your outbound rate is, what your toll free rate is, faxing what the rate is, and then all your different rates for SMS. So inbound SMS to a local number is free, inbound SMS to a toll free is just under a penny a minute or a penny a message. Uh, MMS, so you can see the different things here. US is nine cents, Canada is 1.5. And then we have these four additional zones of international. You have to go to our wiki to figure out what countries are in zone two and three and four and five for Europe and Asia and stuff. But this is the rates that you would pay if you send an outbound message to any of those countries. And then we can see all our phone numbers down here that we have on our location. So again, you can manage everything here. So I think we've spent enough time. The portal's pretty intuitive, lets you manage everything. Uh, the big thing here is if you're setting up a SIP trunk, here's where you can get your SIP username and password. If those ever become compromised, you can regenerate new ones. And if you're using a free PBX system or our APIs for anything, this is your token your, for our APIs. So we're gonna copy this token. We're gonna go over to our free PBX based system. And we have a module called clearly trunking that you can install in your free PBX based system. And when you go there, it just asks for that key code. We're gonna paste that in. But before I do that, just to show you, this system has no trunks or routes set up today. So if we look inbound routes are blank, outbound routes are blank and all the trunks are blank. So we're just gonna add this key code and hit submit. And this is gonna take 15, 20 seconds to reach out to our APIs and get back all the location information for that token. And there you go. So at this point, it's paired your PBX with that location from our trunking star. And you can see some information like your failover settings. And what's neat here is you can even edit your failover rate from here and that will push it back. So if I change this to be 3101, this will sync it back to our portal. And uh, it keeps it all in sync. So you can manage those things like your failovers from the module here or from the portal. So if we go look here and refresh in our portal, we should see if it's synced already. It takes about 30 seconds. There it is, 3101 instead of 3100 now. So we have a little blue button, auto configure outbound routes. Well, this is gonna actually configure our outbound routes and trunks for us automatically. So we're gonna hit the little blue button we're gonna pick which of the DIDs is our main caller ID we want and hit save. At this point, it's gonna go create four redundant trunks to us and set up all your outbound routing logic. So if we go look over here under outbound routes and refresh, we'll see it automatically set up an emergency route, a normal outbound route and an international route. And it set all the caller IDs automatically as the default caller IDs. If we go look in trunks, you'll see it set up four redundant trunks, two to each of our data centers that, that this location is set up with. So then we can click on number listing and we can see all of our numbers that we bought and they're all here, but you notice route two is missing, meaning we haven't set up routes on the PBX for these numbers yet. So you could come into free PBX and add inbound route and add one inbound route at a time with the numbers and set up your routing or we can go over here and hit the little magic blue button and it will auto configure all of them. So if we refresh over here now, we'll see all five or six of those numbers are set up with routes now. By default, it routes them to this DID verification destination on your PBX. So when you call this DID, it would play the call ID you called from and the number you dialed back to you. But we'll hit apply config. 
we'll come back over here. Now, we can also see the failover settings per DIN. So some of these are not configured and some had failover set up already. Again, you can edit your failover from here or from our portal. And if you wanna change routing, which of course you wouldn't generally route here, you can change routing through normal inbound routes in free PBX over here, or you can just click on each one of these and just pick where you wanna to route to. So I wanna route this did to this extension. I want this one to route somewhere else. And you just set up all your routing and you're done. So at this point you can start making and receiving phone calls right from free VBX. So really quick to get up and running. Um, the last thing we'll kind of talk about is SMS numbers. So all your numbers you bought from us that are SMS capable will be listed here. And for each number, you can pick what users are allowed to use this number to send and receive SMS and free PBX. So this is a list of all the, the extensions or users in free PBX. And you just pick which ones. And now those users have the ability through things like user control panel and free PBX, or if you're using Clearly Anywhere, our mobile app, they have the ability to send and receive SMS and MMS right through those interfaces. Uh, just by enabling here what users get access to that SMS. And then emergency. So there's a lot of different pieces to emergency here. The first thing is under Kerry's law, the big thing in Raybombs Act, the big things they talk about is they want more geographical information related to an address. So if you've got a building and you've got two floors, you might set up a geographical location of one to one Main Street, first floor, southeast corner offices, and that might cover 10 people. And you might be first floor, northeast offices. So in our portal, you create dispatchable locations. You notice I have one called Alpton Office, first floor. And the address is just right here but I have Appleton office second floor and the address is the same except for I have a second line telling them second floor offices. Or this example, second floor south end training room. So once you've created your dispatchable locations in our portal, they're all shown here to you. And what's really neat here is we just go to our devices here and for each user, we just pick what their dispatchable location is. You're not having to do caller ID for emergency calling. You're just picking based on the nice friendly name you've named everything. I'm Appleton Warehouse. I'm Appleton Training Room. And these save real time. There's no reload needed. So this reload is from when we, um, met, when we modified our inbound routes. So if I apply this, which will take a second, um, you'll notice as you change these dispatchable locations, there's no save button and there's no reload needed. It's all real time. So if 102, 1002 calls 911, it will then use Appleton Office second floor for the dispatchable location. You can also grant users permissions from within FreePBX's user control panel to let them manage their locations, be able to flip between locations real time. So if you've got users who roam around, you can expose that user that they're allowed to change between these four locations from UCP. Or if you're using clearly IP, IP phones, we have an app on our phone that will let you do the exact same thing from the app on the phone. And if you're using our hot desking with our phones, it will real time show you as you log in what your current location is set to for the user and let you update it to a different location. So you'll notice now if I change second floor, no save button, no submit, but if we refresh this page, you'll see it's second floor. And last thing on 911 is notifications. So Ray Bombs Act wants you the ability to send out notifications when 911 is called. So under manage notifications, you can create notification groups. I have one called emergency already. And if we go edit this group, you'll see I'm sending SMS from this phone number to these two numbers with this message. So it'll say on, it'll replace the date at and then the time. The emergency call was placed by the extension name and what they dialed using what trunk. And it will send that SMS to these two phone numbers, which can be any phone numbers. They can be mobile numbers, any number that's SMS capable. Same with email. So you can set a from address, a subject and a body, and then who you email to the notifications. And optionally, you can set a page group. So in this example, I have a page group in free PBX called test. Because I picked that here, when somebody calls 911, I'm going to page this page group and announce 
extension 1001 called 911 and then bar dump them into that 911 call. Everyone in that page group will be dumped on the 911 call muted and they can hit star one and mute themselves and, and take part of that 911 call if they need to. So you can set up up to three notifications, SMS, email, or paging. You can do one, two, or all three. And once you've done that, you'll notice under route notifications, you just, if you notice clearly trunking is green, that's because I've enabled notifications for it already. We're normal up on international, I don't have any notifications on. If we hit edit, you just pick which notification you want enabled for that route. And you could have multiples. So you can create multiple notifications and then for each route, you can pick one or more notifications to go out. Okay, so that's the 911 stuff. We'll open it up for Q&A at this point. I think we've covered way more than we planned on. There's a little Q&A section in the webinar. I'm being asked, when you call 911, does Clearly P allow a custom on-the-fly inbound route to be created so 911 dispatchers call back the emergency caller ID to the extension that just placed the call in case they got disconnected? Um, no, because the, the callback number is actually part of what they call a callback profile. So in the callback profile, you create a, a callback number. So you notice when we did the mapping here, each user gets a callback profile and a dispatchable location. So I picked Appleton Office for my callback profile. Appleton Office has a callback number of this phone number. So you'd set up an inbound route to go to, for example, a ring group. And because you've sent notifications out, the people who are responsible to receive inbound 911 calls in the event the call gets disconnected already notified who called 911. The problem with doing like what you asked here, Aaron, about having it automatically route back to that person if they get disconnected is, what if that person's passed out or something's happened? The point is they really want under Ray Bombs, they'd rather that go back to a group of people who are trained to handle that inbound call that comes back in, as long as they've been notified. So as long as you set up your notifications, they got notified who called 911. So when 911 calls back, they know what's going on already, what user called 911. So you don't have to have a, uh, a callback number that routes back to the person who called 911. How much does 911 cost and is it related to a did? So no, unlike almost every other provider, our 911 doesn't, if you notice, your traditional way of buying 911 with SIP trunks is you activate 911 on a DID. We don't have anything to do with DIDs. We have callback phone numbers and that's really it. Um, this is all we care about is that callback number. It doesn't even have to be a number you have with us. So our 911 is completely abstracted from a DID or did. It doesn't care. All you're doing is treating callback profiles in dispatchable locations. So how does that work? You buy callback profiles, they are a dollar a month. MSRP on a month to month contract, they go down if you have a 36 month contract. And of course there's discounts for partners. That's our MSRP pricing. And then you buy dispatchable locations. Dispatchable locations are 50 cents a month on a month to month contract MSRP. The beauty here is you're not using DIDs for all this. So in the traditional world, if you needed 10 different 911 locations inside of a building, you'd have to buy 10 DIDs plus 10 E911s for that. In our world, you just have a callback number. So you have one callback profile and 10 dispatchable locations. So those 10 dispatchable locations are five bucks a month, 50 cents each is five bucks a month, plus a dollar for the profile. So you're $6, where in a traditional 911 world, you would be, you know, 12, 15, $20 for that. We see this used a ton at schools. So we've got schools all over the US, hundreds of schools that are using all of our 911 stuff to provide 911 down to the classroom. Last time I looked, I think we had four or 500 schools already moved over for this because it's such an economical way to provide 911 uh, compared to the, the traditional way of doing 911 on SIP trunking. Aaron, yeah, I'll have somebody reach out to you. Um, from sales to, to talk to you about 911 stuff. Any other questions? Tony, if I may speak up, I had a typo on one of our slides. The Ray Bomb compliance deadlines was actually January, not February, January 6th. Uh, of yes. 2022. So if you're going to find the YouTube webinar recording of that event, which is just so great for resources, 
just look for the date January 6, 2022 webinar. Hey, Aaron, if you want to put your um, a best phone number for you, I'll, I'll have somebody reach out to you. Uh, you can just put in the Q&A. Nobody else can see it. Okay, I think that's it for questions. SMS. So you can really see SMS inside of free PBX and send. Um, yeah, so there's a module. Uh, we go to UCP. We log in with a user. So again, SMS can be seen inside of UCP, sent and received. It can be seen inside of um, our mobile app called Clearly Anywhere that you can buy from us paired with free PBX systems or the free PBX's um, Sangoma's own Sangoma Connect or uh, I guess Zulu. Um, SMS, our trunks are capable in any of those any of those clients that free PBX supports for sending and receiving SMS. So you add a widget. I happen to have a widget here already for this phone number. And I can see the whole SMS history of everyone I've SMS, and I can start a new conversation. And send a test message, and then they can reply back. Uh, you can do MMS, emojis, all of that is fully supported. Okay, back, uh, let me just double check really quick, Q&A, Brie, and then I'll send it back to you. Uh, does ClearyP offer a soft phone solution? I use free PBX and Zulu. Yes, yeah, so we offer a desktop and mobile soft phone solution called Clearly Anywhere. What third-party systems are you currently connecting to for PBXs? Lots of them. So we've got documentation on how to connect our SIP trunking and our E9 or 1 dynamic location stuff with, I don't know, we've got 20, 30 different PBXs documented, but any SIP compliant system we can be, uh, you know, we can work with from a SIP trunking in 9 -1 perspective. So I know we have documentation. You asked specifically Grandstream. Um, yeah, so we have documentation on the Grandstream system. You know, I'm just thinking top of my head. Grandstream, um, I know 3CX, Fusion, Samson, Toshiba, all your standard um, systems we have documentations for how to set up trunking on. Okay, back to you, Bree. Awesome. Well, we've just gone over an hour, so I think we'll just wrap up here. Thank you, everyone, uh, so much for sticking with us through the live demo and the presentation. We have a bundle of fun and new webinars starting in a week or so. So definitely check those out on our events page. And again, we're going to have a recording of today's webinar, and that will get emailed to all of you by Tuesday. Thank you, Tony. Wishing everyone a really great day. Fabulous weekend coming up. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Yep. <laughs>